Good morning, everyone. Well, thank you for joining me, and welcome. Um, so this info session is uh, fairly low tech. It's really just going to be structured as a question and answer period for you to bring forth any questions you might have, and hopefully I can answer them all fully for you. Um, so just in summary, um, what we are doing right now is we're in the process of preparing for converting your meal plan from the current one meal per day uh, practice to a, a program which will give you a number of points each month uh, which you will use to purchase your food in the outlets. Um, each item on the menu will be assigned a point value, very similar to what you find in a restaurant. Instead of dollars, we're talking about points here. And you will have 650 points each month to use as you will for your food purchases. Um, each, each visit you make, every time you purchase food, that amount will be deducted from your total balance. You will be given a receipt at the end of your meal stating what your current balance is, just like you do now with the meal per day plan. Um, we will be opening up the point system so that you can use your points in the bistro for lunch or to pe uh, purchase beer or wine or in the future when we finally get back to allowing guests in the dining room when you have friends and family and loved ones visit. Um, <clears throat> the 650 points per month averages out to about 21 points per day. There's a little variance if it's a 30 day month or a 31 day month. Um, but, it, you know, but it's a 0.7 point difference, so it, it's very small. Um, the goal of this program is to <coughs> make East Castle Place hopefully a bit more attractive to folks that are looking to come and purchase a residence here. Um, we get a lot of feedback and market research that says many of the people that are coming into the senior living uh, community market are looking for flexibility. And many of them feel that a one point per day plan, essentially limiting you to 30 meals per month, is very restrictive. And so what this plan aims to do is to put choice back in the hands of the resident and give you the opportunity to manage your points so that you can get either, with the number of points that we allow, you should be able to get your 30 meals per day, not a problem, or one meal per day without too much stress. But it also gives you the opportunity, if you are a lighter user, um, to spread your points out a little more so that you get to dine with us more than 30 times a day without having to pay an additional charge. Uh, a perfect example is someone that might come in at night and have maybe a soup and a Caesar salad. Well, the points for those two items would be less than 21 points, and those points that you save, you could use to have lunch a few times each month or buy a few extra glasses of wine or whatever without incurring extra charges. And so that's where I feel that this brings some flexibility into your lives and gives you a little freedom to decide how you want to dine without being restricted. Those are the high level talking points on the program. So at this point, I just want to open up the floor to any questions that you might have. Yes, ma'am. Um, I don't think that 650 points is enough for the month. Um, looking at, you know, what you said about 21 points mm -hmm. for the meal. Correct. Um, I, that's what I figured it out, too. And you're including, uh, you're charging for coffee, which I don't think should be, that should be a, not charged. So the way it breaks down like this is, so let's just take one of the most expensive items on the menu. Let's say you decide to have a filet mignon. That's 14 points. And if you decide to have with that, now it is structured to be a three course meal. So if a resident is accustomed to having soup, salad, fruit, entree, dessert, beverages, plus taking something up to your room, yeah, you're gonna go over your 21 points. 
If you have a three course meal, which is, let's say a soup or a salad for three points, your highest priced entree is going to be 14 points, that brings you up to 17, and your dessert is going to be three points, that's 20 points right there, and then your bread beverage, which is a point, um, that brings you right to 21 points. Correct, because as I said, it's, it's a three course meal, so soup, salad, entree, and dessert is four courses. So that's where there is some limit there. And we will find that those folks who are accustomed to having four or more courses, yeah, you probably will go over your points. Um, you know, but you can keep it under those points to go in by keeping your courses to three courses per day. Mm -hmm. Now, you always have the freedom to, you know, expend all your points, and then once you go into overage, once you go over 650 points, then each point equates to one dollar as a charge on your bill once you go into an overage. So if you go if you have, let's say, one extra dessert and that puts you three points over, it's 653 points, then you'll be paying $3 at the end of the month for your bill, as opposed to under the current plan, if you have one extra meal, you end up paying 11 or $22, depending on what the meal is. If you go 30 points over, then you end up spending $30 in overages. So there is some control built into it so that it's not a all-you-can-eat scenario. Um, but it is structured so that you can get ordering the most expensive thing, you can get your three course meal every day of the month and still not expend your points. But you can't get what you're used to get. What we're getting now. Again, there, there are some controls placed in place. So yes, wow. if you are accustomed to getting, you know, more than three courses, then you know, you might you're gonna have to make the decision if you want to go into overage or if you want to look at your points a little differently. But again, that scenario I just put up is including the most expensive two items on the menu, which is filet mignon and the salmon. So you could order, you know, fried shrimp or anything like that. So that's 12 points, burgers are eight points, things of that nature. So it's not necessarily that you're always gonna be over your points. You can have a less expensive entree and have room for another course. It's yours to manage and decide. Uh, if you have fruit for dessert mm -hmm. and uh, you take it upstairs, is that going to be three or four points? Fruit would be four points. Why would that be four points? When some people have a piece of pie and a great big dish of, of uh, ice cream. <coughs> I don't understand the point. Huh? I don't understand the point. I said, why would that be? Why would the fruit be four points when somebody has, they have the option, your mm -hmm. dessert, of having a piece of pie with a lot of ice cream on it? Well, I, I, I wouldn't characterize it as a great big dish. So, yes, you can have a piece of pie. Um, you know, I'm currently <laughs> considering whether we want to consider, you know, just letting you have your pie a la mode at no extra charge. I'm not sure at this point. So you're not going to be allowed to do that anymore. You can do whatever you like. That's the point. I know, but I mean you're going to incur more points is what I'm saying. What I'm asking. You're going to incur more points based on what you decide to eat. Uh, I understand that. Mm -hmm. So if you have a piece of pie with ice cream, like mm -hmm. I don't have that, but a lot okay. of people do, it's going to be six points. Is that right? No, probably not, no. No, it, it, at the most, I may be adding a point if you want to have your pie out of mode. So, uh, and, uh, but the fruit would be four points. The fruit would probably be four points, yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. And again, everything is there, you know, readily accessible to you, and it, it puts the choice in your hands of, of what you want to have and what you want to eat. Yes. Kelly. Um, when we go down in the morning, you know, for mm -hmm. the cereal or the orange or apple, is that charged also or is that still no, no charge? there's been nothing in any of this communication that said anything about the, um, the morning bistro continental breakfast being charged. That is currently a free amenity. Mm -hmm. um, it will continue to be so and there's been no communication about changing that whatsoever. All right. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, let me get to Janice here first. Oh, well, this cut down on the waste. There's a lot of food waste here. Um, I, I believe it will, mm -hmm. um, but I can't say for sure. So, mm -hmm. you know, let's take the example. We do have a lot of residents who they may, you know, have their meal down here and then they ask for something to go upstairs. And, you know, if, if do we actually eat that soup or that fruit that we take upstairs? I don't know. Um, this, this program, the goal for this program has not been in any way to try to save money mm -hmm. or extend, you know, increase um, money for the community. Mm -hmm. The main focus of why we're moving forward with this is for marketability. Okay. That's number one. Mm -hmm. uh, we do want to be an attractive environment for folks that are coming in mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, the market for a residence mm -hmm. and might look at us as being a little restrictive, you know. Um, we also, and I believe this firmly, we want to give the residents who are here everything they have now um, with the addition of having some choice and flexibility. Mm -hmm. You know, put some of that back in your hands so that you can decide, mm -hmm. well, tonight I want to eat a little lighter. Rather than skipping a meal because I want to have my daughter come eat with me at the end of the month, mm -hmm. now you can just maybe have a couple of lighter meals and still save those points to have your daughter visit you as well. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to worry about you maybe not eating. Mm -hmm. or, you know, eating just a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for a couple right. of days. Um, and one other thing that I did forget to mention in the beginning is one of the, the second thing we're going to do when we bring this program out is currently everyone's month ends at the end of the month. Um, you may or may not remember, but since I've been here for the last two years, we've always encountered some difficulty towards the end of the month as all the residents come down to the dining room and want to use up any unused meals or bring guests in. And what that's resulted in is um, some very inconsistent service for you. Um, we have a limited number of folks that we can bring into work. And if we have most days 65, 70 people in the dining room, and then the last two or three days we've got, you know, 90 plus, um, we have difficulty managing that. So what we're doing now as well is we're breaking all the residents down into four groups and each group, your billing cycle for points will end either the first week of the month, the second week of the month, or the third week of the month so that this way we're um, spreading that end of month scenario where you're trying to move, use up all your points throughout the month and hopefully have a little more moderated service for you folks. Yes, and it's Mrs. Paul's right, is that correct? Han. Han, I'm sorry. I get to see so many of you so little nowadays, it takes me forever to learn names, so I apologize for that. How does this work if you're gone for a week or more? Mm -hmm. does so currently we have a program in place where if you've gone for a certain amount of time, and forgive me, I always have difficulty remembering the exact specifics of it, I know there's a, a minimum amount of days you have to be out of the community, and once you exceed that, you get a credit back. And perhaps some of you folks can help me, but I think it's about $8 about per day. It's 14 days. 14 days. It used to be. Yeah. Okay. So that is not going to change. It's going to stay the same for those of you who um, leave the community for a certain amount of time. You will still get your credits, and it will be the same terms currently that we use. That will not change. The only thing that is changing is how we account for your meals. The way you order, um, what you order, how we deliver it, whether it's in your room or in your residence rather, or in the dining room, all that stays the same. The only thing that will remain, the, the, uh, that will change is when you look at your receipt, rather than seeing 22 meals remaining at some point, you'll see 620 points, 400 points, 150 points as you get your receipt. The points that you're yes. are what you spent. You will see the points that you have left to, to work with. So you'll always kind of have an idea there. However, I would like to stress, um, I expect for the majority of folks, as long as you really, the, the, what you want to focus on is the number three. Keep it down to three courses and you probably won't even have to worry about points. Oh, I only have 350 points. How much am I allowed to eat for the rest of the month? I don't think you have to worry that deeply into it. I think if you just come in and 
and have your, your soup or your salad, your entree, your dessert, and, and your, your coffee and your soft drink, you should be fine. Even if you're having the filet mignon or the salmon every single night, which I don't think anybody does here. Um, I don't think you'll have to worry at all about points, and that is the one thing I hope uh, to save you is the worry over that, because that's the impression I'm getting is that everyone's sort of worried about, oh my God, how will I know how many points I have left to work with, and now I have to do math. And really the whole thing is just structured so that really you shouldn't have to worry about it as long as you stick to those three courses per day. Yes, Mr. Johnstone. I see that it says uh, each entree includes your choice of two side dishes. Does that mean the side dishes do not incur points? They only incur points if you have extra side dishes, more than two with your entree, or some of our residents will only eat a side dish. I have residents that will order, say, a baked potato and a soup. So we do have points assigned to that, and I believe it's uh, two or three points. Yes, I did Somewhere it too. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, so if you order any of the six entrees listed here, it will have two side dishes, whether it's two vegetables, two potatoes, or a potato and a, you know, whatever way you want to combine it. Um, if you order just your entree without a side dish, there'll be a deduction there. So rather than paying, let's say you order the filet mignon, but you just want the steak, um, there won't be any, you know, you'll pay less than 14 points basically. I think it'll be down to 10 points. You know, so if you choose to have an entree without side dishes, if that's the way you like to eat, you get to save some points as well. Yes. And are other desserts free, like ice cream? Um, well, as I was saying with Rita, you know, that's still, I'm still trying to figure out the way to go there. Um, I want to be able to let people still have their pie a la mode without having to pay for a second dessert. And we don't really give, nobody here really eats a huge portion of ice cream, so probably, you know, if you're having just ice cream, we'll increase the portion a little bit. It'll be the same as any other dessert. But if you have a pie a la mode, that scoop of ice cream will probably just be a small upcharge, maybe of one point. If you just have the pie, that's three, right? And if you just have the pie, it'll be three, yeah. Uh, let me go to Katie back here real quick, then I'll come back to you, Rita. Uh, just to clarify, mm -hmm. when you're talking about the side dishes, when we get an entree, mm -hmm. there's a meat, a, a starch, and a vegetable. Correct. Though that is considered the entree. That is considered the entree at the price you see there on the menu. So, so when you order your filet mignon, it'll be 14 points, and that will include your mashed potato and your broccoli, or any way you want to combine it. Okay. And if you just have um, just the filet mignon, and you say I don't want any side dishes, it'll probably be anywhere from 10 to 12 points. We're still kind of digging through that a bit. So that side dish area mm -hmm. that you're talking about is in addition, is in addition. addition to what you Let's say you want your steak with mashed potatoes, uh, broccoli, and peas, well then that third side dish will be an additional charge. So or if, what if you would take off one of the side dishes? I don't want squash, I want the peas. <coughs> you can interchange them with whatever. Um, it's, st it's still included. Okay, good. Yeah, so okay. if you say I want green beans or, you know, whatever, you know, if, if you decide that you want fruit as one of your side dishes and you've only got one other side dish plus fruit, then it's still $14. Okay. It still counts as a side dish. Okay. And then when you order extra side dishes or just side dishes, say a baked potato and a bowl of broccoli and nothing else, well, then that's three points okay. each. Gotcha. Yes. Yes, Rita. I just want to ask about Sunday brunch. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me of sort of what the points would be for that? Um, I, I can't say off the top of my head, and I hate to say it. I didn't think to include that in these samples. But it will be, um, you know, working on the same system. Um, but unfortunately, I didn't think, I didn't have the forethought to include a sample of it here. Um, you know, but it, it, it's going to be, again, tailored so that you can get the things that most folks normally eat for the 21 points. And that's, that's our goal across the board, is just to try to get to the point where everything you can have in a three-course meal will be 21 points. Yes, 
Yes, Mr. Johnson. So when I come to the end of the month and I got 50 points, uh, in one day I can load up 50 points worth? You can, if you want. I would probably ask you, you know, take it easy on us. <laughs> but that's the main reason why we're breaking everyone up into four groups as far as the end of the month is concerned. Because that's kind of what we were experiencing before is, oh my god, I have six meals left. Let me order six entrees. And unfortunately, at that time, because we would have so much business normally, I would have to come to you and say, Mr. Johnstone, I'm sorry. It's too much pressure on the kitchen. If we let every resident do this, we won't be able to keep up. Can I, can I talk you into just having maybe two entrees instead of six? That's an uncomfortable conversation. I really don't like having to come back to anyone and say you can't do something. So by using this new plan where everyone's broken down into four groups regarding their end of the month, now if you've got those 50 points and you want to put in a big order because you're having visitors in your residence perhaps and you want to buy dinner for everyone, not a problem. Um, if it becomes a problem, we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But Again, we're hoping that this plan allows us to take some of the limits off of you that are there now. Yes, Wayne. Well, I think this is, once we get used to it, we'll find it very attractive. My question is, how many other communities in the Milwaukee area have adopted this kind of plan? Well, I don't get out much. And this is my first senior living community, so I can't speak authoritatively as to who Milwaukee does what. Um, I will say that this plan is pretty much the standard for senior living communities like ours. Um, the current plan that we have is quite dated. Um, it was the most popular plan maybe 20 years ago, you know, because it just kind of made it easy. Um, and as time goes by, as we see the baby boomers coming into the market and everyone's focusing on, you know, how that's going to impact what we do, how are we going to stay attractive, the market research tells us folks want choice. Folks want not one big dining room with a country club atmosphere, they'd rather have several venues that they can go to eat and things of that nature. So we're a bit behind the curve here and we're working towards updating what we do and how we do it um, to, to match what the market wants. Some of it is a very easy fix, like what we're doing here. This is the simple part. Uh, some of it is, is more intense. At some point, I hope that we're able to do some renovations within East Council Place that allow us to you know, perhaps have a more formal dining room and a more casual dining room. Perhaps a, a more casual spot that is more of a real bistro than kind of what we have now, which is nothing like what I would call a bistro, you know? Um, so some communities, so we're an all-inclusive community where you just pay your fees and everything else is lumped in as an amenity. You don't get charged really separately for your dining here. You have a, a service fee and we're part of the services just like everything that Laura does is part of your services and the transportation. Some places don't operate that way. Some places you're just paying for your residence and maybe the restaurant is pay as you go. You know, in some places do it cash. They're all different permutations, but this current plan of a, this uh, proposed plan rather, of a declining balance of points that we give you is pretty much the, the standard for all-inclusive communities like ours. And we're a little bit behind the curve with the one meal per day plan. Yes. Are yes, Rita. Are all LCS communities doing this? Is LCS uh, suggesting that? LCS is, is definitely suggesting it. I don't know if I would say all LCS communities do it. So we're not technically an LCS community. We contract with LCS to manage East Castle Place. Um, but, you know, LCS is a, a, a big um, player in the industry. They are, they are an industry leader. And, yeah, their, their counsel is, yeah, if you want to stay current, if you want to be a part of what people are looking for when they come in, um, to look at your community, then you're going to look better if you have a point plan as opposed to the one meal per day. However, I will state it's not dictated by LCS. No one has said, well, you have to put this in place or else. 
this has been, you know, Tyler and myself talking about, you know, what the, the market needs and how can we do that um, going forward. So we're planning for East Castle Place to stay a vibrant community so we can keep having a nice flow of, of lovely wonder, people coming in. I just wonder if LCS does that because I know, uh, you know, like at Maryland, uh, uh, Hill uh, has a lot of uh, communities, retirement communities are mm -hmm. all over the United States, whereas mm -hmm. LCS has a lot. LCS owns uh, our sister place, right? Um, and New they don't place. own us, right? That's correct. They do not own us. We contract with them for management right. services. And they employ Tyler and correct. So forth, right? Correct. Okay. But you. again, you know, there is no mandate that we have to do this coming from I anybody. I understand that. Yeah. This is just a strictly was, an internal East Castle Place yeah. management decision. Well, I was yeah. just asking. Mm -hmm. I was curious. Yes, sir. Kelvin. When uh, <clears throat> I know it said that after, what is it, three or four months, you're going to review it and see how it's going? So, well, we're going to review it after <clears throat> day one and day two and day three. Are we, gonna so have this any, is, are, are we gonna have any input in it? Absolutely. Oh really? Okay. So, you know, when I came here, I made a promise to everyone here that, you know, your voice counts for something, okay? And we don't make too many big moves around here without consulting anyone. Um, so we've talked about this for about a year and a half. First folks that we brought it up to were the Resident Food and Beverage Committee and then also to the Resident Council. Um, you know, so it, it's not just a last minute change that we're throwing at you. There's been talk going around for a while. I am asking for a 90 day period to roll this out and um, get some consistent work on it before we start to think about was it a good decision? Was it a bad decision? What can we tweak to make it better? Um, everything, all the decisions will be made with the interest of the residents in mind. Absolutely. Now, do we vote on it then, everybody, or what? I, I don't think it's necessarily something that would be put up for a vote or a referendum. Uh -huh. um, it's kind of difficult to manage a community like this that way because there are so many different yeah. ideas on how to do things, and you know it. it you know it can, it can, It's a little more complicated than just saying the majority wants this, so we should do it. Mm -hmm. Again, we have a lot of things to consider. And one of the big considerations, the primary consideration here, is how do we make ourselves more attractive to uh, folks looking for a place to live? And we recognize there are a lot of folks here who say, well, I've been here eight years. I think it's fine. It's not broken. Don't fix it. You know, and those people would definitely say, hey, we don't want it to change just because it is change. And um, we realize that in the eyes of folks who may want to look, come live here, by their definition, it is broken um, intrinsically because it's not what they want or see as attractive. One other question. Um, when it was mentioned about if we're gone, for example, three weeks on mm -hmm. somewhere and we get a credit back, uh -huh. but that credit still ends at the end of the month then, right? If we come back in three weeks, the, the credit's only good till the, to the one more week, right? It doesn't roll over. Again, I, I can't say specifically how that works. Let's say if your, your time away spans two months. Let's say you leave in the third week of the month and you don't come back till the second week of the following month. I don't know how they structure that. Basically, my belief is that it's applied as a credit to your bill. So in other words, if you were to leave now and be gone for X number of days, I believe you'd have a credit on your November bill, okay. you know, but I think maybe you may want to reach out to Tyler or Brad to talk about the specifics right, of that. Right, right, yeah, okay. And I, I'm pretty sure you have some documentation probably that you were given when you moved in that will detail that as well and answer those questions, um, but I can tell you that that policy doesn't change. Right. How, we, how we administer that right. does not change. Right. Anything else? Let me go to Augie in the back. He hasn't asked a question yet. My restart date is uh, the 15th of the month. Okay. 
What are you going to do on November 1st for me? So on November 1st, the program begins for everyone. If you are one of the three groups that ends sometime um, in November without getting a full month of use, your, basic, your plan will be prorated. So if you, um, let's say your plan ends after the first week of November, in that first week, you'll have 150 or so points to use for that first week. Extend that out for however number of days you have in that first month. Once we get past that first month, then of course you're on a full 30-day program and it recharges that way. But for the first month, many of you will be prorated. You don't necessarily receive the 650 points in the first month. You'll only receive the number of points um, proportionate to how many weeks you have in that first month or how many days you have. And it'll be factored at the 20, uh, plus minus 20 points, 21 points per day. I'm, yes, ma'am. I'm wondering um, how you came up with the 650 points a month. So we decided on 650 points because I knew that it would, I assumed that it would be, um, the big sticking point would be this $21 sort of number that's floating out there that people seem to feel that they, each meal is worth. So when you go over your 30 meals or 31 meals per month, um, we charge you $22 for every meal you go over or $11 for every lunch you go over. And so that sort of puts this $22 number in everyone's mind, thinking that every time they sit down to have a meal, they're paying $22. Well, that's not really the case. You only pay when you have an overage. But I wanted to try to figure out a number that we can assign points to everything um, that would be sort of comparable to that, so that it's a little less of comparing an apple to an orange. I wanted to try to get some sort of apple to apple comparison. So this way, by going to 650 points uh, per month, it averages out to around 21 points per day. And now you have an equivalent to what you felt the value of your meals were prior. And an equivalent of when you do have an overage, if you have an overage, where one point will equal one dollar. So it's an arbitrary number. Um, we could have very easily said 350 points and just made everything on the menu, you know, half the value in points, and it would have achieved the same end. But my hope is that by choosing that number, it allows everyone to sort of compare what they're having a little easier and hopefully feel a little better about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I came up with uh, being charged $50 extra. Well, again, if, if you're comparing it just to what you currently eat, and what you currently eat is more than the three courses, then you probably will come out with extra. So it is structured to try to, you know, have the 21-point value come out to about three courses. Um, but I will say also that at this point, without us even having started the plan, it's probably too premature to, you know, say, well, I'm going to be charged over. You know, keep an open mind about it. Um, let's get through that first month and see where we stand, bearing in mind that it is structured for three courses rather than four or five, and then we'll see how it goes. If it turns out that, you know, we put this plan into effect, and it is having a negative effect on everyone in terms of, you know, what you're being charged at the end of the month as an overage, you know, we'll probably go ahead and retool what we're doing. Again, the goal is to make sure that every resident can have their meal per day that we promised to you when you came on board without necessarily going into overages. So if it turns out that maybe we came up short in points and everyone's paying overages where they didn't pay them before, then we'll probably look back at it. But we'll also analyze, okay, why is this individual having overage as well? They're having four, five, six courses, extra meals, they, you know, that's what's causing the overages, and we have to kind of look at how we're approaching our dinner. So the goal isn't to make sure that everyone can just do what they're doing now and not have an overage, um, but to set some guidelines and you know, let's, let's give it time to see how it's going. But we will be monitoring that. We will be listening to you uh, when you say, hey, I have overages and this is a problem. Okay. I have one more question. Yes, ma'am. What do you do with the food that's left on the buffet table on Sunday? Do you have any idea? 
Well, currently we're not running buffets. Uh, we're doing a la carte um, in the dining room for, okay. for brunch. Oh. Yes, we haven't done buffets since we shut down in March. Um, it, 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 it represents a, an increased infection risk. So when you come down to the dining room uh, on Sunday brunch, it's all plated a la carte uh, for you. You'll have a menu, just like you have at dinner, with points assigned to each plate. Um, yeah. And if we do ever get back to buffets, if at some point, not that I think it'll happen, but if by some point we come to a decision that we can do it safely, and it's what everyone wants, then it'll probably be like you would get at most places. The buffet is X number of points, and you know, go eat. <laughs> oh, I, again, uh, can I ask? A lot of, I have a lot of people here complained uh, about uh, what we've been getting or whatever. I mean, it seems to me that the people that live here aren't considered. It's just the people maybe that will move in. Mm -hmm. The people who live here are absolutely being considered, which is why the goal was to make sure that once we roll this out, you can still get your one meal per day without having to worry about your points. So absolutely, you know, you were foremost in our thoughts. Now, the, the, the point that I believe you're trying to make is that, you know, you're fine with the way things are going, and you really don't want it to change. But unfortunately, you know, we, we, we do come to a point sometimes where we realize that what we're doing is not healthy for the community. Uh, let me go to Katie back there. You know, I'm really glad that um, those that are in charge are looking to the future mm -hmm. because if we have empty rooms, if we have nobody coming in, if everyone is going someplace else because we're behind the times, mm -hmm. that's going to affect the bottom line for us. I think we have to we have to be solid in the market. So I'm Correct. I'm very grateful that we might have to. Nobody likes change, but mm -hmm. this is, let me tell you, in the world of a pandemic, this is a teensy change. <laughs> yeah, but it is still a change. But it's and still a change. I'll be perfectly frank. My life would be much easier right now if I looked at everything that we're looking at and say, hey, you, you know what? It ain't broken. Just let it ride so that those individuals who are happy with it can just not raise their voice. Well, I appreciate that you're mm -hmm. looking ahead. Yes. Putting and, work into it. Yes, and of course, you know, part of my job is to do whatever I can to make sure this is a vibrant community and that we provide great service. Part of that is taking care of your needs while you're here, but also thinking on how we can position ourselves so that we stay attractive and you have a nice flow of great people coming in to keep you company um, at dinner. Yes, yes, ma'am. I have a comment and then a question. Mm -hmm. uh, I second what Katie said because at first I thought, why fix it? It's not broken. Yeah. And then as I looked at the plan and your explanation, I'm convinced I'm going to have excess number of points at the end of the month. And it's not going to be a problem at all. Yes. My question though is, how are you going to prevent people from increasing, say, the last week they have 50 points, they say, well, I'm going to order four desserts to take mm -hmm. home. Where we're not going to prevent it at all. So they're your points to use as you like. And if you get to the end of the month and you want to load up, like I said, maybe you maybe you have a sweet tooth and you want those four pieces of pie, that's perfectly fine. I'm not here to, to be a cop and tell you what you can and can't do. I'm here to help you live your life with as much choice as possible, and that'll be your choice. Well, I think you ought to limit it to three. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Really? I, I'm not saying the pet pie. No, no, I understand. But just being reasonable. Yeah, I, I understand. But you know what? There are others who feel opposite that. We, we have a pretty big community here. There's 130 independent living residents. And so what I want to do is manage things and have a program that allows each individual to live according to the way they want to live and what they think is important. And if someone thinks four desserts is important to them, have at it. At least now, with this new program, breaking things up into four different groups, I don't have to worry about 20 folks wanting all that food on the last day of the month. Now it's going to be broken up. Most folks won't do that. Most folks here are very conscious of what they eat and very conscious of waste and very respectful in that regard. But you know what? Ultimately, 
I want you to have the freedom to decide what works for you. So I appreciate you saying that, but again, you know, the big thing that makes me happy about this is it allows you to live it the way you want to live it. Yes. Yes, Kelvin. Is assisted living on this plan also? Or? This is only for independent living residents. Right. Once you go into one of the other um, constituencies here in the community, whether it's assisted living or in the health center, all those meals are included in you know your right. overall service. Yeah, yeah. And there you get three meals a day. Well, we have to give it a try. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. Um, and you know, I I would just. Ask everyone to go into it with an open mind. You know, I feel good about this because I know that I'm going into it with a pure heart. Um, I know that I'm going into it um, with your quality of life top of mind. Um, and I certainly don't disregard what you need. I certainly don't disregard the stress that it might be causing some folks here. I realize it's asking a lot, but I think there's a great payoff in this and how it's gonna position the community and my hope is that everyone finds that it is a much more flexible system that suits your needs better than the current one meal per day plan. We thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yes, Martha. You know, a lot of times I never order rice, but I get so much rice. <laughs> and that's, yes. it's not right. Uh, okay. Well, we'll try to keep a special eye for that. I will be totally transparent. We are struggling with accuracy in all our delivery orders right now. I hear it just about every day. Several residents come to me and say, I didn't get what I ordered, or I ordered one thing, I got another thing. Um, you know, unfortunately, one of the side effects of what we're doing now, especially with the having delivery items and the dining room, is that it's a real rush for the kids to get all the to-go orders out of the way so they can turn around and service the dining room. And um, that, that imperative to rush, I think, leads to a lot of mistakes. I will say, and I know it's not a great, um, I know it's not a great trade-off, but if you do need something addressed, call the front desk, myself or Mary or her supervisor, checks the front desk at 5.30, 6 and 6.30 for any missed opportunities that we might have, and we'll try to recover. But I know it's frustrating, we're working on it, we're working on it, but um, we have not quite gotten to the point where I can look you in the eye and say we are 100% accurate in our deliveries. Yeah. Anyone else? Well, everyone, thank you so much for making the time to be here. I appreciate you all. Um, I look forward to the next month. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Carlos, for your consideration. This plan is great. I, I agree. I agree. So let's give it a shot and we'll see. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.